Thank you for joining this presentation. I'm Raquel Ribeiro, and this is going to be a moment for all of us teachers, educators, coordinators, teacher trainers, to take a look at the possibilities of generative AI integrated into a classroom practice. I'd like to invite you at first to type in the chat where you are following and watching this presentation from, okay? So I'd appreciate checking uh, from which part of the world we are following and the colleagues, and this is so interesting. Thank you again for being here. The idea of this session is that we try out a few things from two perspectives. The perspective of the teacher, when we are planning our lessons and planning our classes, but also the perspective of our students. And for that, I invite you, if it is possible, of course, uh, to have your mobile ready, because there will be a few things you can try here, or maybe uh, you can try in your laptop as well. But always consider the context that you are teaching. So if you are teaching online, remotely, or if you are teaching a class in person, if there's like equipment available at your school, or maybe if you need to agree with the learners, with your group of students one day, uh, so that they can use the mobile during one specific class, all right? By the way, it's a good idea if you can share in the chat your context. So, what is your English language teaching context? Is it remote, online? Is it in person? Okay, tell us a little bit about it. The most popular generative AI tools uh, nowadays that are very, very popular, they are the ones I have just presented here. So, do you recognize the symbols each one represents? Which is the most current one? Which was the first one to be used? You can interact in the chat. It is right, we've got ChatGPT, the very first one, then Gemini, this evolution, if you consider that used to be called BART. Let's go pilot and that's Dipstick, the newest one. There are other uh, generative AI tools. Can you remember another one I haven't mentioned here? Just um, share this in the chat and if you have the link as well, okay? This is a good moment for all of us to get to try out all the possibilities as well. Well, the, the idea of human-centered approach of this session I have selected some topics for us uh, to focus on because this is going to be the very essence of the session here. It is human-centered because it is an interaction between us teachers to guide our learners. So this is the main, uh, we are the main actors in the play. And the technology, whether you're using that in a laptop or if it's a mobile phone uh, or, or a tablet, what you have available, it is one part of this learning journey. Because that is the whole point uh, of using technology as a means through this journey of learning a foreign language. And I use I have been using the UNESCO guidance and I'd like to highlight these points for all of us. One key thing, the use of AI should enhance the human capabilities. So if we consider the critical thinking, vocabulary expansion, because we are learning another language, yeah, it is a human machine collaboration. Another point, we as teachers, we need to develop and we need to improve our competencies to understand how is it that I can use 
AI, this artificial intelligence or generative artificial intelligence to teach behind the scenes during my class preparation? How is it that I can integrate it to the learning moment in class with my students, probably working in smaller groups, maybe working individually online? And of course, our very own professional development, because the way we have been using and the possibilities available currently are not the same from two years ago. It is very important to consider, and if you are a coordinator, if you are um, a head teacher or a teacher trainer, this part of developing AI competencies for the team that you are leading. Somehow, when we deliver our sessions, uh, we also develop the digital citizenship for the group of teachers and for our learners. Somehow it's intertwined. And then the key characteristics to observe, it imitates, this emulates these human capabilities that there is a wide ranging capacity for information processing. And this is, seems to be really great. It generates content and it depends. It is a response to a prompt. So a prompt is the instructions given to the artificial intelligence. Uh, here, there, there are two very important guidance here from UNESCO. I'm going to share this in the chat for us. So one is this guidance for generative AI education research on mostly general terms, and then the AI competency framework for teachers. This is really recent from the most recent Digital Learning Week in 2024, and I'll be sharing this link with you. There's also a guidance for students. We need to have caution when using, because this is not like, oh, everything is going to be such an amazing journey. No, we need to be aware. So the first thing, it does not understand what it is generating. So it's not salient. The critical approach, contrasting, depending on the prompt, and you're going to have an output. So prompt, the instructions given, and the output, what, what results. And everything depends on the type of activity you have in mind for your learners and how that connects to the lesson you are teaching. Critical approach because we need to double check things. And of course, uh, beware because it might produce false information. For instance, remember I was showing you uh, some examples. This is Copilot. And the first message here in Copilot, which is one of the available AI, it says Copilot may make mistakes and this goes throughout the other possibilities, ChatGPT and Gemini. It's very important to be aware. Very well. If you have this possibility, you can scan the QR code and this is going to lead you to a simpler way to visualize the AI competency for teachers. So you get your phone and just, you know, point your camera here. And this is going to take you to a simple uh, kind of handout. I don't know if you can visualize properly here, but it's also going to be in the link for us. When we are working with generative AI, nowadays, if you start speaking a native language, it's going to follow through in that language, but it depends on the device you've got. So one important move, and this is important to share with your learners as well, it's an important hint, add English as the second language in general management language 
it is helpful because then things can uh, happen much faster way. Let's go and design some communicative tasks. Remember, I asked some of you to tell us whether you teach in-person classes or online remote classes. And there are possibilities for both approaches. We are starting with in-person classes right now. Uh, this is a prompt that can be created and can be shared throughout any social media, any generative AI site, okay? So the idea is we are going to use instructions and my objective here right now is to have my learners practice and experience a little bit of rehearsing for a language exam, you know, so adults and teenagers, they have to go through the process. And this is one example. How does that go? We get this prompt and you realize this is a very elaborate prompt. And as you get it, you are going to realize that this prompt here directs to very specific questions to be asked. Questions are simple, they are uh, intermediate level questions. And I request a few things from the artificial intelligence. So one of the things is to ask me the questions one at a time, comment after the reply. Let's see an example now. 